the Führer was God. Uh, he had an unbelievable influence on masses. Unbelievable. To me, and not only to me, he was a genius. If, if some, by some miracle, he had suddenly changed his ways in 1939 and not gone any further, he would have gone down in history as a great man. My question is always, why all the Germans followed him? Why did the Germans follow him? Adolf Hitler's early life was a recipe for failure rather than fame. He was an ugly, hostile child. Some say abused by his harsh father, a minor official in an obscure Austrian town. So he grew up uh, deprived of uh, comfort. He was also deprived of, of love. Charles von Lutichau is former senior historian for the U.S. Army Center for Military History. The son of a German diplomat, he served in the German army in World War II. He, he was a lousy student. He had, had, had terrible uh, study habits. And he had a sequence of failures in the middle school, which was the only stepladder for him to get out of his old milieu, so to speak. And uh, this habit uh, followed him throughout. Example was, uh, we are told, by people who lived with him and shared a room that he would not get up until noon and uh, was basically lazy. Now, some of the important decisions in World War II could not be made because Hitler was sleeping. At 11 o'clock in the morning on the day of, of the Allied invasion in Normandy, the Commander-in-Chief West Rundstedt demanded that the Armed Forces High Command release the armored divisions that were standing on the Channel Coast uh, north of the Seine River. And they couldn't get an answer because Hitler could not be disturbed. He was still asleep. Young Hitler's life is marked by rejections. He drops out of school and goes to Vienna to become an artist. He scratches out a living by selling paintings like these to tourists. Few of them have human figures. Twice he applies for enrollment to Vienna's Academy of Fine Arts. Twice they turn him down. Of course, one other great ambition of Hitler's was to become an architect. And the course of world history would have changed if he had been allowed to the Academy to become either a painter or an architect or both, but not a politician. It is 1918. World War I is coming to an end. Still another career ambition will be denied Adolf Hitler. He has served as an enlisted man during the war. He has been wounded. He has won the Iron Cross. He likes the army and wants to stay in, but the army says no. He never achieved any rank. In, as uh, 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 worth speaking of, but apparently he still liked it. Dr. Earl Zimke is an author and professor of history at the University of Georgia. He served as consultant to Time Life Books on its World War II series. So you could say really that it's possible that the reduction, the forced reduction of the German army gave the world Hitler. The seed of the future Adolf Hitler emerges from its shell in Munich. It is 1919. With no other career open to him, he decides to become a politician. Hitler came across a small party that didn't really even apparently have any members. It had only had a board originally. It was called the German Workers' Party. Later on, it became the National Socialist German Workers' Party, the Nazi Party. Hitler found some things in that party that he particularly liked. It, namely, one, it was extremely nationalistic, and two, it was anti-Semitic. He became the speaker for the party, and all of a sudden he found out he could draw crowds. His speeches were all essentially about the same thing. He was always the, the persecuted person. Germany was always the victim. Power beckons. It is 1923. Hitler and his Nazi followers try to seize the government. The coup fails. He is convicted of treason and sentenced to five years in prison. He serves nine months. 
While there, he writes Mein Kampf, My Struggle, an autobiography in which he presents a master plan of astonishing boldness. The Jews will be eliminated. Germany will kill off and enslave the Slavs to provide Lebensraum, living space for Germans in the East. At the time, few read the book. This was a rather remarkable scene, a fellow there sitting convicted of treason, serving a five-year sentence, uh, eligible to be thrown out of the country, this saying what he was going to do when he came to power. Released from prison, Hitler decides the best way to reach his goals is to destroy the system from within it. He barnstorms the country by airplane, a novel thing to do at the time, and tells people that only the Nazi party can right the wrongs they have suffered. He has become an effective speaker, an intuitive politician. He courts and attracts money from rich men who think he may become a useful tool. In election after election, the Nazis lose, but steadily gain political power. By 1932, they win a third of the total vote and become the largest party in Germany. The aged president, Paul von Hindenburg, appoints chancellor after chancellor, trying to form a majority that can govern the bankrupt and divided country. All fail. In 1933, it is Hitler's turn. Hitler now asks the legislature to pass an enabling act that will give him dictatorial powers for four years. Tired and intimidated, they pass it. When he asked for the uh, Enabling Act, he really didn't have a two-thirds majority. But he didn't need, really, to have one because he had the rest of his majority standing along the wall in brown shirts. And the parties knew how they had to vote if they wanted to stay in good health. From the summer of 1933 on, there was only one party in Germany, namely the Nazi party. After World War I, the tragedy was, when Germany was defeated, the overwhelming majority of the Germans never accepted being defeated. They believed in military victories and they couldn't understand why in the final end they lost World War I. Then this propaganda came, step in the back. We were betrayed, and who was responsible for this? Then they found the scapegoats, most of all the German Jews or others. Dr. Hans Adolf Jakobsen of the University of Bonn is a noted historian of World War II who served in the German army. The second very important uh, aspect in the spirit supporting Hitler was that uh, the overwhelming majority of the Germans were no, not Democrats. They didn't understand what does it mean, a democratical political system. They believed in an authoritarian system, uh, obedience, honor, greatness of Germany, and so the parliamentarian system, they don't like very much. And they always were looking for uh, what they call a substitute emperor. 